Hello everyone, it's me again and I'm back. Last time I showed you my side project or side quest where I took a broken Mac and put it in a jar. And to my surprise, you guys liked the video. And because of this, I decided to do another video. And I have a bigger jar now. No, just kidding. Uh, I'm not going to use a bigger jar. I hope I'll be doing something completely different. But yeah, it's a funny, funny idea. What I have today is a MacBook Pro from 2016. But before I show you more, I just want to let you know that I don't like breaking perfectly working devices. This is why in my videos I use only things that are already damaged or not functioning correctly. Just like this MacBook uh, that is already cursed with all the defects for the model. And this is why I decided to take it. As you can see, the MacBook looks perfectly fine on the outside. However, if you have a closer look, you'll see that the screen doesn't lit up and you can see there is actually a picture. This is a very well-known issue for the model. And also this MacBook has a non-working keyboard, which is again, a very well-known issue for the model. Half of the keys don't work and the other half just do like a lot of clicks when you just press it once. The Mac is now set it up and it works. However, it can be only used with external screen and keyboard. I can use it like that, but if I decide to repair the issues, it will cost a lot more than just buying another one. That's why it doesn't make sense to do such repair. However, I hope in this video today to do something completely different with it and give it a second chance at life. Now disconnecting everything and clearing the desk for operation. One thing I've noticed was when I turned the Mac, I saw that all the screws but one were missing and the one that was still in the bottom cover was completely stripped so I had really hard time taking it off. One side note is I really hate how these Macs open. Uh, if you haven't done this before, you'll easily cut your fingers trying to pull the bottom cover. Well, nothing unusual, it's a bit dirty, but I've seen worse. Now I'll quickly perform a surgery here and take out the motherboard because that's the part I actually need the most. Interesting fact is that those MacBooks actually have a replaceable SSD. That's, that's quite cool and handy, unlike the newer models. When I was looking for a MacBook for this video, I was hoping to get a MacBook that is with a touch bar because the power key is actually separated from the keyboard and I wasn't lucky enough to get such Mac and I don't have a power key, which will be an issue for the future. But I'll talk about it again later in the video to tell you what my actual idea was. So the board is out and I think I'll take the Wi-Fi antenna out also because I'll need it. As you can see, there is not much left except the antenna heatsink in this tiny cable, which I have to remove because I have no use of them right now. Before the sale, the owner of the MacBook told me that it was actually overheating and I wonder why. I have a feeling that this was never being cleaned or uh, the thermal paste was never replaced. And yes, I was right. Check this out. It feels like cement or dust. It doesn't feel like thermal paste. I better clean this off and clean the board also. Another well-known fact for those Macs was that they are running quite hot. So if you put them through a lot of stress or work, uh, they usually throttle down or your bottom case will feel like an oven. So those models were really cursed with defects or issues. As you can see, now the board is clean 
and that's the only cooling this laptop had. I'm no expert, but I feel like that's not a lot of cooling. Tell me, what do you think? My goal now is to do better job and actually make some good cooling for my Mac, not this tiny paper thin heatsink. Last time, a lot of people were calling me to dip it in liquid and this is why I decided to do a liquid cooling system for my Mac. After a lot of searching, I was able to find this tiny radiator that hopefully will do the job. And I also got a fan that fits on top of it perfectly. And it also looks quite compact. My only concern was the CPU cooling block, but it looks good so far. And lastly, I got a small pump that will move the liquid inside the system. So I don't know, it looks promising. I hope it works. I have to make a shell for my Mac, so I chose this. This acrylic makes quite the funny sound. I have to do a few cuts now. I've never done it before and I think it's easy. Let's go. I'm so bad at this. I wonder why I do this to myself every time and I can't answer it. Please don't write this at home. This was so easy, you can't believe how easy it is. Now I need to do some final cuts on the outer shell and I think it will be perfect. Also, I'll need the mounting screws from the Mac so I can firmly secure the motherboard. Not sure how I managed to miss this. This is my tiny drill that I managed to modify so it can accept larger bits and make it useful. Now I have to drill a few holes so I can mount my screws. It looks good. All four are set. Let's see how the motherboard sits. Yep, nothing is falling. Perfect. Now let's make some adjustments on the top cover and cut out the excess plastic. So far, this is surprisingly easy. Just to remove this. God damn it. Let's pretend nothing happened. I have to cut some excess plastic here on the top cover and make room for the CPU cooler in the middle. Need to file down the rough edges. I think it looks good now. Let's see how it fits. Perfect. I think it's perfect. Again, I need to cut off some excess plastic from here. Remove this and let's measure again. Like a glove. And now the stand. This will be tricky, I think. My idea is to fit the radiator in the stand but first I need to modify just a little bit my pump. I will remove the top of it with my grinding pan, but that takes too much time. Let's see now. Yep, perfect. And again, I'll have to file down the rough edges. Much better now. I will use this tiny bottle as a water tank, cut out the bottom and glue it on top of the pump. I think it's perfect now. I'll just use some super glue. I hope nothing goes wrong, right? Now for the radiator. I'll mark where I have to drill holes for the screw and make a cutout so the air can pass through. So far so good and it looks perfect. God, not again. Just one of those days where everything breaks. Anyway. 
Now I can file down the rough edges. And remove this. Now I can mount the radiator over the plastic. Things are starting to get shape and it looks promising. Everything looks good, but I have to make some changes on the top cover. I need to make a little bit more room. Everything till now wasn't easy. A lot of tools, a lot of fails and a lot of time wasted. So if you have a project like me, you don't have to suffer like me because the sponsor of this video can help you. PCBWay, you can trust them with your project or idea. They can build everything for you. A prototype PCB, no problem. Maybe you wanna get some PCB assembly, no problem. Or maybe you need some molding or maybe 3D printing. They can do it for you. You don't have to own expensive equipment now. Here you can get everything you ever need. Go to PCBWay.com and you will find everything you need. Maybe you wanna make some custom housing or case no problem, they will make it. You get to choose from all sorts of materials. You need something special or maybe something simple like stainless steel. No problem, they will do it. Just go now, don't wait. Thank you PCBWay. Now it's time to assemble the cooling system and I really hope this will work. I have my doubts, but yeah, let's see. With the radiator and the fan already assembled, I have to get some tubes going. I hope the tubes will be enough because they are quite thin and I'm not sure how much liquid will pass through. I will use glue to uh, get the tubes on the cap and on the radiator. I'm sure there will be some leaking, but I'll find out on the test run. I will mount the pump with some double-sided adhesive. And I also now need to find a solution to this. Nothing is keeping the water block pressed against the CPU. And I decided to use the springs from the MacBook. But this time I'll mount them on top of the block so they can keep it pressed. Perfect. Now, let's connect everything. I think two screws will be enough to hold the top with the stand. Also, the cap is already dried so I can put it over the tube. Now I need to provide some power for the fan and the pump. I'll try to do some cable management this time. Single USB cable will be enough for power. And now I can add the liquid inside the system. I had few small leaks, but as you can see, I used some glue to seal them up. And now I'm happy to show you that the system works. What do you think? I was planning on adding some lights simple like those or maybe something even cooler like these but I decided to leave this for another time. Now I'll just assemble everything and try to make a test run of the system. Some thermal paste, now I can place the cover. However, since the MacBook has only two ports, I have to use this Type-C hub. I will just mount it on the back with some double-sided adhesive. Connect the mouse and the keyboard. I'll directly connect the cooling and this will be my screen. I have this iPad left over from another project. It was a non-working device that I turned into a external screen. Some quick cleaning and it will be a perfect fit for today's video. Test run of the system number one. We have low battery and nothing. Turns out that the hub can't deliver enough power so I had to plug the power directly into the MacBook, not in the hub. Now, as you can see, I've managed to turn on the Mac. 
but I also see that it's running really slow and I think I know why. I've connected only the Wi-Fi antenna for a better signal now, but since the Mac is missing the fan, the battery and the screen, the system is being throttled and runs extremely slow. The only solution I could think of right now was to get OpenCore Legacy Patcher and disable the throttling. However, since this video is already too long, I will end it here. I know my projects may look a bit childish or maybe unprofessional, but they are fun for me and I hope at least for some of you they're also fun. If you want to see part 2 of this project, please like this video and leave a comment below. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay cool.